Well, here I am, redoing an entire talking head part because the mic fell down my shirt when I started the first time. So, first things first, I want to apologize about the last video and the fact that the autofocus was going crazy the whole time. I think that the autofocus box was in the wrong spot. So you know how I do this with my hands a lot. I use my hands to see how the, my hands are not in focus. Oh, face in focus, hands in focus, face in focus. Yeah, so I think that the box was low and so it kept catching my hand the whole time. So right now it's totally, totally fine. Today we are talking about cinema lenses and we're gonna compare modern cinema lenses to vintage lenses because I talk about vintage lenses a lot on the channel. I've got a set of Canon FD lenses that I've converted to work for cinema. They've got follow focus gears on them and they have different front filter rings on them so they can all take the same size filter. And I also put Canon EF uh, mounts on the back of them so they can work on all my cameras. But today we're gonna talk about why you might wanna use a real modern cinema lens versus using an old vintage lens like that. So recently my friend purchased a full set of cinema lenses. They are called the Nikkor uh, Superior Cinema Lenses. Um, they're actually made by a flashlight company. Yeah, so that's why you haven't ever heard of the name Nikkor before. They came out actually somewhere around like August of last year, but he just recently got his in. And I wanted to try them out and kind of see what they were like. So these lenses are also branded as the Mavo Cinema Lenses that you might find on Kinefinity's website. They're just a white labeled rebranded version of the exact same lens it seems. Um, they're around $2,000 a piece. And you can get them as a full uh, set if you want to. And that comes with a case that holds all the lenses, which is a pretty nice addition. I'm pretty sure that the case comes for free if you buy the whole set. Um, so yeah, but I think they also used to be called the Nisi lenses, N-I-S-I, -I, which I think those are no longer on the market maybe, I'm not quite sure. I know you could probably get these from Nikkor themselves or maybe a Nikkor dealer, or also like I said, using the Kinefinity's Kin website and they're under the Mavo full frame lenses. Now these lenses come in a 25, 35, 50, 75, and 100, but today I'm mostly gonna be comparing the 35 millimeter and the 50 millimeter, and also just to add another lens to the mix so we can kind of see the differences between cinema lenses and vintage lenses. I'm also gonna be comparing an SLR Magic lens. They have a cinema lens that are called the APO Primes. Now I have a 50 millimeter that we can use for comparison. Now the APO just basically means it does not have any chromatic aberration. So SLR Magic in the past doesn't, in my opinion, have that great of lenses. They're really kind of soft and kind of a, have weird bokeh. Um, some of them are all right. I actually tested out the Micro Primes recently as well, and they were fine. I mean, for $500, of lens, they were totally nice lenses. The fact that you got a cinema housing and nice follow, uh, a nice focus gears on those and stuff like that was pretty nice. But this is the more uh, expensive version. This is the one they've tried a little bit harder on on the glass. So the APO primes, which is about an $1,800 lens. I think it's $1,900 if you get the PL to EF mount uh, adapter that comes with it, which is really nice. So you can put on a PL mount camera or quickly put that mount on and put it on an EF camera, which is something that not a lot of manufacturers do. Actually, these Nikkor lenses also can do that, but they don't just have a quick adapter. You actually have to take off the back um, mount and put on a whole new mount using screws, which is a little bit more cumbersome um, and not quite as cool as those Lauren Magic lenses. And so then we're gonna compare those to my Canon FD lenses and kind of figure out the strengths and weaknesses of cinema lenses and why you might wanna use a cinema lens over using a cheaper vintage lens. So let's quickly talk about the most obvious differences. So my old vintage lenses that I've converted for cinema, you know, I had to add my own gears to those, had to add um, a new uh, step up ring on the front so they could all have the same filter sizes just to kind of make things easier when shooting. And then I also took apart the back mount of the lens and put on EF mount. So that was a little bit of a hassle, but like my favorite lens, my Canon FD 55 millimeter F1.2 was only like 200 bucks on eBay. Now, of course, there's gonna be some flaws with that. It could have some fungus in it or some dust in the lens, but that's just kind of the sacrifice for getting something so inexpensive. So these cinema lenses are all very big. They're all very heavy. So that's something to consider when um, buying these because you might need a bigger tripod for that, something that can hold a heavier weight, or you might need a, uh, a lens mount. You wanna make sure that your lens mount can handle the weight. Basically, you might need to get another extra little um, lens holder when using these lenses if you have a smaller camera. Now, I did put these lenses on my Fujifilm X-T3 with the Filtrox Speed Booster and it worked out totally fine. I did not have any issues with it, but just something to keep in mind that it, it, these lenses are much, much heavier than your standard lenses. My little Canon FD lenses are very light. So all the, the Nikkor lenses are obviously gonna be, very, they're gonna be the same size and all their focus rings are gonna be in the same place. So when you um, are working on a set and you have maybe a camera assistant or maybe just your, it's yourself, but you're using a follow focus, when you go to change the lens, you can pull off the lens, put the lens right back on and your focus gear is gonna line right back up again with your follow focus because everything is built the same. Now that's a big bonus of using a cinema lens versus using like my converted 
uh, vintage lenses, which you definitely have to move the follow focus every time um, to a different place when you put the lens back on. And they're all gonna have the same size front, so you can use a matte box on them and quickly uh, push that on and off or use the same size filters on all the lenses, which is a big plus for cinema lenses as well. So these Nikkor lenses I think are um, marketed as, as being kind of like vintage lenses. I think it's kind of the best of both worlds is basically you're gonna get this really nice modern housing, nice modern glass, but I think these lenses are gonna be low contrast, um, which is gonna kind of give you a vintage feel, you know, versus using a DSLR lens, which is gonna have a lot of contrast in it, which is better for photography, maybe not quite as good for filmmaking because you want a more organic look when you're doing film because you want a you know, more natural look because we're talking about, we're telling real stories rather than maybe an over stylized uh, photo. So I thought it'd be good to just compare them side by side and kind of look at them and see if you can see the differences in the image quality and what you might like about one versus liking about the other one or maybe some downsides of either one. So I set up a little scene here. It's just like a little bar scene. It's my wife sitting at like a little bar top drinking a beer. So first I'm just gonna kind of show some images one after another and you can, you can just look at the differences yourself. I'm not gonna tell you what the lenses are yet. I'm just gonna let you kind of Mentally pick the one that you think is your favorite or maybe the stuff that you like and don't like about some of these lenses. And then afterwards we'll come back and I'll tell you which lens is which and so we can kind of break these things down. Okay, so now that we've seen the 50 millimeter, let's check out the 35 millimeter lenses. So now obviously I don't have the SLR magic for this one, but we are gonna test out the Nikkor 50 millimeter wide open at T2. And we'll test the Canon 35 millimeter at F2, which is also wide open to kind of see how that looks. So this Canon 35 millimeter tends to bloom a little bit if light hits it and gets a little bit kind of washed out. That vintage coating really um, it kind of, you have to kind of lean into that with this lens if you want to use it. Um, but whereas this Nikkor has a much more clean look to it, much more modern look. So when light hits it from the background, it definitely does not have those problems. That's what I kind of like about these Nikkor lenses. They have a low contrast look, but yet they have some of the uh, more modern aesthetics that you would get from a modern lens. So you don't have to deal with those vintage flaws, where sometimes the vintage flaws are nice to have because you can use that and lean into that for the look that you're trying to do. But that's not always good for every project that you're shooting. And actually I shot all of this on the Kinefinity Mavo LF. Uh, my friend that bought the lenses also has this camera and I thought it'd be another good chance to play with it some more because I've been meaning to try out this camera even more. I've tested a little bit on the channel before. You can go back and look at my S1H for cinema camera videos if you wanna check that out. I did that so I could test it on a modern full frame sensor because these are full, these are all full frame lenses. 
And so something to think about when I was using these vintage lenses, especially my Canon 35 millimeter here, um, it's just a very tiny small lens that's going on the front of this giant cinema camera. So these cinema cameras are designed more to have these kind of bigger lenses on them. So when you go to start accessorizing them and you want to put a follow focus on there and stuff, the follow focus was harder to get to the 35 millimeter because the 35 millimeter was so short. Whereas these cinema lenses have a much bigger barrel on them, a lot bigger wide focus gears. And so it was farther away from the bot camera body. It was much easier to mount the follow focus on and get it in the right place. So that's another thing you want to think about with the vintage lenses. There's definitely some downsides there. So I'm not going to show off every single lens in the kit. Um, if you do want to see a more of a baseline test of all the lenses, go check out my friend Keaton's video. Um, I'll have that link in the description below where he kind of went out with all the different lenses and just shot them in the same environment. So you can kind of just see how they all flare and look in normal environments. Now I've shot on Cook lenses, Zeiss CP2s, the Canon Cinema lenses, and they all cost more than these $2,000 Nikkor or SLR Magic lenses. And I think the Nikkors are my favorite lenses I've shot on in a really long time, which is really exciting that you can now get these types of cinema lenses for that inexpensive. Now $2,000 is pretty expensive, but if you are in the market for cinema lenses, I would highly recommend these. Now something to be said is that you have to find a dealer to get the Nikkor lenses, or you're gonna have to buy from the Kinefinity website if you wanna get the Mavo version of the lenses. Um, whereas like the SLR Magic, APO primes are, very, are readily available on B&H Photo, much easier to come by right now. So that's just something to think about if you um, need some lenses more quickly. So did you like the vintage lenses or the cinema lenses better? I've used my vintage lenses on commercial projects and even, even recently shot a major celebrity on those lenses. I can't talk about that yet. I'm hoping I can talk about that later on the channel. But until then, I'll just say major celebrity. Um, and it was fine. The vintage lenses totally worked out for me, although the cinema lenses would have been more trusting on that day. But which one did you prefer? I mean, let, let me know in the comments below if you found um, any unique characteristics between the two lenses that you thought made one look better than the other or vice versa, let me know in the comments below. I'd be curious to hear your opinion on that too. So I just got these lenses in. I wanted to try them out and show them with you guys. I thought that'd be helpful for you guys to look at too. So if you like this video, definitely give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. And if you love this video, definitely subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, there's gonna be a lot more content like this coming soon. So until next time guys, I'm Sister Sakurai. See ya.